we're, we're filming. We're filming. The, this little this little scrapbook contains what we're doing today, but it also contains one of the most bizarre coincidences I've ever experienced. We'll come to that in a bit, but for the meantime, welcome to the Lambourne Valley Railway scrapbook. scrapbook. It's not a scrapbook. <laughs> it's, it's a video. <laughs> it's a video, it's a railway. Uh, welcome. Also, we'd like to thank uh, national platforms <laughs> for the use of their um, craney, lifty, platformy thing. To hold our camera. To hold our camera to film the intro, so that was really good of them. It's probably not them. They're probably, it's probably been rented off of somebody else. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> this is Newbury. Newbury Station, I think, was open for the uh, uh, Hampshire Berkshire Extension Railway, probably 1854-ish, that's mm -hmm. a guess. But it also had another railway that went through it and used the station, which is the Didcot Newbury and Southampton Railway. We've done that before. Link up here. Another railway that connected here, but quite late in the whole railway scheme of things with this one. We're doing today this railway called the Lambourne Valley Railway Scrapbook. And that went off down that way towards the west, about a kilometre from here, and went off towards the north west towards Lambourne. Hence the name of the railway. Gives it away a bit. Right, there's our first glimpse of the railway today. It peeled northwest out of uh, it's Westfields in Newbury. And you can still see a curvature through the, the line of the houses, the way they're built and the border of some of the gardens actually take the shape of the railway. I love it when you can see those sort of things on, on Google Maps, modern maps. But let's go and have a look over there because it's our first glimpse of the railway today. So we missed the first station because that is in Newbury Westfield's housing estate. And ahead of us is our first piece of infrastructure. Cool. And a sign, Speen Moors Walk. That's not a sign, I thought it might be railway related considering we're under the railway bridge there. There might be something on there. Let's have a know. Do you fair you did only read the top line, Speen Moor Walk? Because underneath it says Speen Moor and Lambourne Valley Railway. <laughs> so the Lambourne Valley Walk is nine miles, or at least you would be if you could walk at all. Okay. So the land from here is nine miles. Bizarrely, we've got nine abandoned stations to cover. Yep. So one oh, a mile, which crikey. is kind of great. But let's um, crack on and see how many of those nine stations we can see. One of them we're not going to even visit because we've already done it, yep. but either way. Okay, Speen, Speen for Donington, Donington Park and area just to, to the north of us. You can't see anything there at all. The sidings, obviously no station building, just a load of private houses. How's it going, Rebecca? It's all going good. Uneventful station, really boring, just a house, like a housing estate. Um, oh, well, it's a tick. We'll be, it was a tick, but we'll be able to walk some more in a moment, I think. So we're we actually going to walk some of this, this Lambourne Valley walk, because you said it was a really pretty walk. Totally, yes. This is a footpath now, which I think is the start of it. There's a few signs about, but that doesn't look good. That looks like the A34. Ooh. That's not pretty. Back to the car. Okay. Right, stock cross and bag shot halt. Uh, completely inaccessible. So once again, another little drive by, but we'll try and get a couple of good shots because it looks pretty cool. Well, this is a village of Boxford. Very picturesque, very lovely, but the station again, completely accessible private house. It does get better. This is our plan for today, and we're conscious that we've already ticked off four stations without really showing you anything. So we're whizzing through some of these because there's good stuff to come. Plus, there's also the random stories in here, which we're going to get to, but also the random coincidence, which I've still, it's still hurting my head, <laughs> but we've got some walkie bits in a minute, so it, it gets better. Welford. Uh, nothing to see. Nice bit of old track bed. Um, now I've just prop the camera on a bit of broad gauge railway. Even says uh, EV still. Uh, can't really read it, but GWR. You can clearly make out GWR on it, which is a bit strange because the railway was built in the late 1800s. 
and by that time they'd long used a uh, standard gauge railway so um, maybe this is sort of leftover bits and pieces they had and um, reused it to make a fence Slight issue. Mm, coal won't, well, it will move, but it keeps flashing red. Yeah, we've had to call recovery because it says error. Cooling system and it's red, and we've rung the people that we're hiring the car off at the moment, and they've said to stop the car, don't drive it, park safely, mm. and away to recovery. So, as it's not our car, we don't want to take any chances and uh, ruin the car for somebody that actually owns it. Yep, yeah, little abandoned station up there, which is yeah. nice, but we're going to be here for probably a little while. Frustrating. A week ago, we, we were doing a video on the Lambourne Valley Railway scrapbook. That was about 10 seconds ago for you guys, mm -hmm. but it was a week ago for us because we broke down. The camera's now sat on another hire car. In the background is Welford on the uh, Lambourne Valley Railway scrapbook line. <laughs> and um, we thought the platform was over there when I had a nosy around by the old bridge where we'd broken down, but actually they're just there. But in the meantime, join us on what would be part two of this journey on the Lambourne Valley Railway scrapbook. More on this coincidinkadinkadinky in a minute. What the hell's that? <laughs> coincidinky. Coincidinky, not coincidinkadinkadinky. Coincidinkadinky. Coincidinkadinkadinky. I was going to say coincidence <laughs> and coincidinky at the same time. Sorry. Great Shepherd. 1898, 1960, somewhere around here. Not really sure, a lot of houses. At last, for the first time today, we can actually walk along a bit of the track bed legally. It's a first. I say first time today, the first time this week, because it's taken a week to film this yeah. bit so far. <laughs> right, East Garston in the distance. Um, absolutely nothing left to see, like most of the old stations along here. Zero left. Not even a hat tip to the railway. It'd be nice if um, there was the odd sign by the community, but yeah. hey ho, such is life. Not even a station road this time. No, I don't know, was there? <laughs> I don't think so. No. <laughs> so, um, we're also aware that because of the random way we've had to film this, because of our little breakdown in the middle, not personally or mentally, maybe there was actually, <laughs> maybe there was actually the car, yeah. <laughs> we've um, not really given you much history. We don't really want to make our videos overly historic, but it's nice to give you a bit of context. This is a really nice little walk actually, isn't it? It is quite nice actually. I think now we could almost walk to Lambourne if we felt that way inclined. What even is that? <laughs> it's just rather, like you said, heavy duty. It's like proper solid, like, I don't know. Random wrong here, but there's no, where, there's no hole where it was. It's like a fence post, but an extremely heavy duty, massive amount of concrete in the ground with some upright iron on it. Looks like some old track, but also not wood in between. Where's there's, it come from? Where's the hole? Yeah, there's two of them. What exactly is that all about? I don't know. Right. I'd love to know. So a bit like uh, East Garston, this is Eastbury Holt. It was open from the same sort of period, 1898 to 1960 but absolutely nothing left whatsoever. Not even a trace. You have a very difficult time trying to establish exactly where the station was here, um, because there's nothing, just houses. A bit disappointing, but we can now walk along a bit of the track bed again towards our last stop um, on this railway scrapbook line. Okay, speaking of scrapbook, why am I carrying this around for the whole of this video? And what is the Coinky Dinky? Well, that's a good question, Rebecca. 1973, now the line closed in 1960, but they did like a charter, a special run on the line for passengers. Your last chance to ride on this line as a passenger, despite the fact it was closed for 13 years. And if you went on that charter on this line, 
you got given one of these as part of the package, which is great. It was full of old pictures and um, info and history and diagrams. The coincidence is quite mad because a lot of people write to us and say, oh, I've got these old books, you want them because I don't want them. Or they send us bits and pieces, which is lovely. And somebody three years ago sent me that. Didn't know the person, at least I thought I didn't know the person, sent me this the scrapbook, the thing you got when you went on the railway on that charter journey. And in it, do you want to open the first page? Oh, flip to the second page. In it is a letter dated to... 9th of September 2011. Dear Alan Whitewick, that's my father. Um, thank you for the walk you describe in the magazine, The Butty. The Butty is a magazine for the Kent and Avon Canal. And my father used to write articles for the Kent and Avon Canal in, on The Butty, just different walks you could do. This chap has written to my father and it's in this book. It's a bit about where the Kent and Avon interacts with the line near the start. And I said to my father, did you send me this? Because I'm sure it wasn't you. And he said, no. That's crazy, isn't it? That is quite bizarre. So in this book that somebody gave me out of the blue, is a letter to my father containing info about this line. It's just the bizarrest thing. It is definitely a coinky dinky. Yeah. Anyway, we're going to walk to Lambourne. Okay. This, do you know what we've just done? What? We just said we're going to walk to Lambourne. Oh, we just got in the car. And here we are getting back in the car. Well, it's too cold to be doing all that walking today. Did you just go to Bristolia? I did a bit, didn't I? <laughs> So that was Lambourne. It was. It wasn't very exciting. No, not really a surprise for this whole line, to be fair. Housing estate, well, you could see the cutting of the, of the yard, the goods yard, but it was just a bit mm. uneventful. So we didn't really waffle in there because we don't like to waffle outside people's houses. That's a bit weird, isn't it? It is a bit weird. If you like that kind of video, however, because we actually did tick off nine stations. Which is quite a lot for one video. You can boop the like button. Boop. That's my thing now, I'm sorry, I'm booping the like button. Sorry to the we would, you we, stole that from. We would like you to, <laughs> to do the thing with the like button because it helps us and that's very, very um, kind of you. In the meantime, we'll see you this time next week. Mm -hmm.